Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is my Chanel Deauville. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, it's gonna work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Paige Murray. Do you think we are in a luxury bubble that is going to burst at some point? I personally am getting turned off of Louis Vuitton because I see it everywhere now. I'm thinking of selling off some of my collection while demand is still high. Um, all right, so do I think that we are in a luxury bubble that is going to burst at some point? Um, I think that for some individuals, yes, and for others, no. I think that some people that maybe have been purchasing luxury goods for like the last 10 years, not so much that they've lost an interest, but maybe they're not actively looking for items as much as they used to before, or maybe they want to take a break from it. So like I said, I think that some individuals, yes, but I also think that with the people that end up leaving, that ends up bringing more people in. I almost think that's almost like a cycle. And part of me also feels that social media has kind of catapulted luxury goods in a completely different direction and it's made it even more popular than ever before. Even more popular than where it was 20 years ago, you know? So it can be somewhat off-putting to see something that you really like so heavily saturated within the population. But at the same time, you know, I'm almost like, hey, I see your bag, handbag addicts unite, you know? Um, and then I think it's almost like a secret club that's not so secret. I don't know, <laughs> that's how I feel. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic. What do you guys think? Do you think that we're in a bubble? Do you think it's going to burst at some point? Or do you also think that it's going to get even more intense because of the whole social media thing or what have you? I would love to hear what you guys have to say on the comment section down below. But fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Alice and Jesse. I've been trying to go on the pre-love route and I've been looking at consignment shops for a few different items and the pricing always baffles me. For example, I have my eye on the Gucci Marmont card case in black. It retails for $250 on Gucci's website, but on Fashion File, it's listed for $325. I've noticed this trend for most pieces I'm looking at. As far as I know, this is a regular piece, not a rare item or special edition. So what gives? Why are used, easily attainable items more expensive at consignment shops than directly from the fashion house? This is an awesome, awesome question. And personally, when I am looking on the pre-love market, I want a deal. I want something that's going to be less than if I was to go onto the website or in the boutique. I want some type of savings, you know what I mean? That's why I absolutely love the pre-love market. However, a lot of these consignment shops also have international reach. And even though something might be attainable where we are, that might not be the case in a different part of the country or even overseas. You see a lot of items that the United States gets that other countries don't end up getting and vice versa. So if someone has been um, actively looking for an item and they're not able to find it at their location, they're able to go on these consignment shops and they're able to find them. So I think it's more about supply and demand. It's more about supply and demand because even with not necessarily Gucci, not even Louis Vuitton, I'm talking about all of these, um, all of these fashion houses, a lot of their classic pieces, their small leather goods, um, even though you know they're not limited edition or anything like that, they're not easily found in certain parts. Like there are things here that I can easily find on the West Coast, but then I hear about people on the East Coast are like, I haven't seen that item in months. I haven't seen that item in years. And I feel like the consignment shops absolutely bank on that. So if it's something that isn't easily attainable in different parts, or if it's an item that is hard to find because it is call for availability, they're able to set the price because they have it. The consignment shops are able to have it and it ultimately comes down to that person, that individual, whether or not they want to pay more for the item. If it's an item that they have been actively looking for for months or years, it might be worth it for them to pay 50 or $100 over the retail price instead of them having to wait that their boutique or their location is going to get it. Because sometimes, like I said before, it could be months, it could be years until they ever end up getting it. You know, so I've seen some gnarly things on the pre-love market. I've seen some pricing that I'm just like, oh man, that's crazy. You know, because there have been small leather goods that easily retail for 250, you know, in the boutique. And then I see them online and they're going for like 550, $650. I can log back in at any given time and it's gone. And I think that's why, because again, it's all about supply and demand. And it's ultimately about that person wanting to pay that price for an item that they truly want. Or if it's not easily 
be uh, easily found in their part of the world or in their, you know, or anything like that. So that's what I think. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic. Um, but fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from EA. While there are clearly some major quality and customer service issues going on at Louis Vuitton currently, do you think that some expectations have become unrealistic? I saw one on the Facebook groups yesterday, someone returning their Neverfull because of one single solitary stitch that they thought looked sloppy. I see this a lot lately on Facebook, individuals complaining of quality and posting photos of what in most eyes looks like exceptional work. I'm beginning to wonder whether we are getting so hyper-focused on every minor detail that we are forgetting that these are handmade and not every detail can possibly be 100% flawless. This is an awesome, awesome question. And uh, you're right, Louis Vuitton has quite a few different aspects that they need to improve on. Um, but do I think that some expectations have become unrealistic? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Uh, when I think of quality concerns, when I think of quality issues, I think of glazing, cracking, I think of melting varnish. I think of an issue that's going to affect how the item ends up wearing to the point where you can no longer use it because of that same issue. That is a quality concern. Other times it is a characteristic of the type of material that they're using. Other times it is a characteristic of the design of the item. For example, when it comes to trifold and bifold items, because of how you end up using the item, because you're constantly opening and closing them, they are going to wear a lot faster than a small other good that doesn't have that type of design. You know, so it's a matter of really stepping back and seeing if it's going to affect how the item ends up wearing. And something to note is that 15 years ago, or 10 years ago, they used a completely different type of material for Louis Vuitton small leather goods that I feel was maybe a little bit more resilient than how it is now. So that's also something that I often um, I often think about when it comes to new small leather goods or even new collections in general, the, the difference of material that they have switched into. It might be a lot more flexible, it might be a lot more comfortable, but it might not necessarily be as durable as it used to be way back when. Um, but at the same time, I also understand where people are coming from, especially if they're getting into luxury goods. And if you end up hearing of so many different issues, if you end up hearing about so many different problems with a lot of these fashion houses, not necessarily Louis Vuitton, I feel that it raises doubt and it makes people wonder if the item is going to wear the way that it should when they do see some type of flaw that has started to happen within their small leather good or their handbag. And I feel like that's I feel like that's justified concern because they're they're genuinely curious if the item is uh, is faulty or if it's something that it's inevitable that it's going to happen that way. You know, and it's kind of like what I talked about last week um, with the price points that a lot of these fashion houses are. I do expect perfection. Unfortunately, that is not the case. That is not the case. And a lot of these items aren't necessarily handmade. They are are, um, you know, they're made by machine and they're finished by hand. Other times they are handmade, but you're right. Sometimes you won't get a hundred percent um, something that's going to be flawless because again, it depends on the on the material. Sometimes the leather has certain characteristics. Sometimes it has veining, something that you can't necessarily smooth out with any type of process. And I think that people really have to take that into consideration as well. So like I said at the beginning, I do understand both sides. I understand that sometimes it might be something a little bit superficial. Other times it is, you know, it is something to be concerned about, but I also think that if someone feels uncomfortable with an item, you know, if they feel uncomfortable with the way that it's wearing, I think it's okay to take it into the boutique and ask the sales associate, hey, I noticed this, is this normal or is it something that I should be worried about? Sometimes the sales associate might say, you know what, it is a quality concern, let me take care of that for you. Other times they'll say it is normal wear and tear and they can tell you about it. But uh, unfortunately, you hear a lot of times that they're saying, oh, it's, you know, it's normal, it's normal. How many times did they say that the Pichette Matisse problem was normal? You know, some, sometimes they looked at us like we had a third eye. They looked at us like we were crazy. And it took how long for them to finally say, yeah, you're right, it is a problem. You know, so it's kind of a gray area. It's not black and white. It's not something that you can say it is this way and it's not. It is definitely a case by case scenario. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. What do you think? You know, whatever, um, whatever your opinion, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Kristen D. How do you deal with friends and family that think it's okay to borrow your luxury goods? 
How do you politely say no without sounding selfish? Say, for example, they have an event to go to and would like to use your luxury clutch slash evening bag. Um, I think that when it comes to borrowing, it ultimately comes down to the type of relationship that you have with that person. If you guys are used to borrowing each other's items or if you also have the type of relationship where you can be brutally honest without, uh, without worrying about how they're going to react, I think that's also important. Uh, you know, of course, if someone ends up borrowing your items without asking you, that's always unacceptable. Uh, but I have had a few experiences in the past, and both times I have always been... One time I was very blunt, and uh, the other time I was a little bit... Um, I kind of weaved around it a little bit, if you will, but I was still honest with both people. And that, to me, is imperative. Uh, because I think that by being honest, you can let them know where you're, fe you know, where you're coming from. So the first, uh, the first experience that I had, um, I've known this person my entire life. I have the, you know, I have the type of relationship where I can be blunt, and I was because they are not very careful with their own items. They couldn't care less about luxury goods, and it made me, it made me really nervous. And I said that I said it makes me really nervous. I'd rather not. You know, and they appreciated the fact that I was being honest with them and we are still stronger, you know, strong as ever. Uh, the other person that I had that asked me to borrow one of my items, I said um, I would feel very uncomfortable. Instead, why don't we go shopping to find you something that you can use all the time? And by being able to put it back in their court, um, I don't know if it necessarily makes them think maybe a little bit differently about the situation, but in, in my scenario, it ended up working out fabulously because now this person also enjoys luxury shopping. So, um, uh, it ended up working out, you know, in the end, but still, I feel that by being honest, by being upfront with them and, um, you know, letting them know how you feel about the entire situation makes it better. That way you're not, that way you're not necessarily lying and you're not trying to make them feel bad. And if someone ever makes you feel bad or if they think that you're being selfish because they, you don't let them borrow their items, I think that's wrong. It's, I think that's wrong as well because they can't blame you for feeling the way that you do, especially if you end up spending a certain amount of, uh, a certain amount of money on something, whether it's something expensive or not, it doesn't have to be a luxury good. They should respect where you're coming from and they should understand. Um, at least that's the way that I see it. At the same time, if my mom, uh, if my mom ever asked me to borrow any one of my items, I'd be like, it is yours. You can have it. I would be so excited. So that's why I say it really comes down to the type of relationship that you have. Um, not only that, I also, you know, I used to borrow things when I was a teenager with my friends and that was okay. But nowadays I don't really feel comfortable with it because I always think, what if something was to happen to the item? And if something was to happen, that makes for a very uncomfortable situation, you know? So I don't want to put myself in that type of predicament. And I feel like not only that, I wouldn't be able to enjoy the item because I would be so worried. I would be so paranoid that something would happen to it that it's like, you know what? I'm going to get my own thing because if I ruin my own bag, that's different. If I ruin someone else's bag, I would feel... I would feel absolutely terrible. I would feel horrible, you know? So I would rather not venture into that type of situation. If I can avoid it at all costs, then absolutely go for it. Um, you know, so I'm not too, I'm not too big of a fan on borrowing in general, um, you know, nowadays, but um, ultimately, like I said, it really depends on the type of relationship that you have. But this is an awesome, awesome question. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. And if you have had any situations like this happen in the past, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lil B. Flores. Hopefully I said that correctly. I got the small Urban Spirit backpack in red and looking to add the jumbo double flap in the near future. I know it is more expensive than Louis Vuitton. However, I am tired of going to the store for all these issues. What is your opinion on the Urban Spirit backpack? Um, all right, so first and foremost, major congratulations on your small Urban Spirit backpack. I'm super excited for you. And before we get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag really quickly.
I think this backpack is a beauty. I appreciate so many different aspects about it. I love the fact that it's very versatile. You can carry it various ways. It's not just limited to using it solely as a backpack. I also like the fact that it holds an impressive amount of items, especially for it being a smaller bag. You know, so whether you want to carry a little bit more, or a little bit less, you have that option. Um, and I also think that it has quite a bit of security because it does have the drawstring uh, closure and it also has the flap on top. So I I think if you want a little bit more security when it comes to a backpack and if you end up carrying it that way it gives you a little bit more peace of mind uh, personally it is not for me because of the drawstring I have had a backpack in the past from a different fashion house and um, it just doesn't end up working out for my lifestyle I find it to be a little too fussy but still like I said previously I do appreciate the fact that it adds a little bit more security to how you end up carrying the bag and uh, one of the things that um, I was kind of not thrown off but not even surprised but when I first saw the urban spirit backpack I thought that maybe as time goes by it would end up um, aging very quickly just because of the silhouette that it has um, it doesn't have too much structure to it I thought that maybe it would end up sagging a lot more along the sides but as time has gone by, as the years have gone by, when I go on the pre-love market, they end up holding up a lot better than I anticipated. So I also think that that's awesome. You don't necessarily have to worry that the bag is going to turn into a beautiful mess. Not only that, I also think that it's quite comfortable because of the leathers that it's available in. It's not too, um, it's not too rigid and it doesn't, it's not too stuffy. It doesn't have too much structure. So it's almost like it has a little bit more play. So even though it is not for me, like I said, I do appreciate a lot of, uh, a lot of different aspects about it. So I hope that you you're enjoying it. Fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Mrs. Legal Diva. If you were moving out of state, how would you take your handbag collection? Um, all right. So if I was moving out of state, I'm pretty sure I'd end up putting it within our cars. I'm pretty sure I could end up uh, fitting it no problem. I would leave them in their dust bags. Of course, like the boxes and everything else would go in the U-Hauls. Um, just because I think I just... I'd probably get paranoid. Knowing knowing my personality, I'd probably get paranoid and I'd want to ensure that they're with us at all times. Um, I say that now, but who knows if that ends up being the case because what if we end up having to carry something else or what if we're strapped for time and it also depends like how far we're moving. Uh, but I think even if I couldn't put it in like like if one of our cars had to carry something else, I'd ask a <laughs> I'd ask a family member <laughs> to or a friend to drive with us to <laughs> to our new place, and um, I'd end up putting you know half of my collection in their car too. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but yeah, I think that's what I would end up doing. But I would love to know for those of you that have moved out of state. How have you taken your handbag collection? Uh, do you end up leaving it in the U-Haul? Do you take it with you? Whatever the case may be, uh, please let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Anna Rankin. Hopefully I said that correctly. What are your thoughts on the Gucci Small Padlock GG Supreme Canvas and Leather Top Handle Satchel? I've been looking at it for a couple of years, however, a bit gun shy on pulling the trigger. Um, all right, so before we get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag really quickly. I think this bag is absolutely beautiful. I like the shape of it. I love the structure. I think it's versatile. I also think it has an awesome price point for what it is that you're getting. And to me, it looks very similar to the Louis Vuitton Clooney. I think it has uh, similar characteristics. But actually, this entire line, whether it is the satchel or some of the other bags that they have within the collection, I think that they're all beautiful. And last year, I was actually looking at uh, one of the bags with the same type of leather with kind of like the same type of setup. And uh, I was a fan. Like I said, I like so many different different aspects about it. I think the leather looks absolutely beautiful. Now I will have to say that the sales associate, she actually uh, recommended against it. And I always appreciate when sales associates are brutally honest when it comes to any product that I'm looking at, you know. Uh, but she did say that even though it does have quite a bit of pros, she actually recommends uh, going against it because of the type of leather that it has. She said that the type of leather ends up uh, showing wrinkles and it ends up scratching very, very easily. She said it is somewhat delicate, so if you end up using the bag for either a week or a month, it will look like you've had the bag for uh, for months, if not you know, for a year or what have you. So she said it doesn't age as well as some of the other products that we have within the fashion house. Uh, she's like, you know what, do what you want, but I'm just saying this 
bag um, is a little too delicate. You have to be a little bit careful how you end up wearing it because it can end up scratching a lot easier or what have you, you know? So it was kind of a bummer because I was super excited about the bag that I was looking at. I was really close to uh, pulling the trigger as well, but the fact that she said that it is somewhat delicate was uh, was kind of a turnoff, so I, uh, I decided against it. At the same time, I don't have the bag, so I can't personally say that that's how it is going to wear. Um, and I would love to know if any of you guys do have this bag within your collection, if it ends up wearing fabulously, or if you also think what the sales associate said, let us know in the comment section down below. The more information, the better. But uh, this bag, like I said, is beautiful. It has quite a bit of pros. Um, unfortunately, I just think that with that type of uh, leather, it might end up aging a little bit faster. But still, I look forward to hearing you guys' feedback if you have it. But uh, I don't know if this ends up helping out. Fantastic question. Hopefully, I was able to answer it. Next question from Karen Fields. You've mentioned that there is a dark side to YouTube. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, all right, so there are certain things when it comes to YouTube that can be quite frustrating or other times I feel like the environment can be somewhat toxic to a certain extent. Uh, but I personally like to focus on the positive, not the negative. Um, but with certain, you know, sometimes I feel like it can be somewhat similar to, um, to high school. And, you know, there can be a lot of drama at certain times. And I like to, tr I try to distance myself as far away from that as possible. I don't really like to partake in anything like that. Um, you know, there can be quite a bit of cattiness or, um, or like a lot of clicks. And I wasn't a big fan of high school, so as an adult, like I said, I prefer to keep my distance. Um, and if someone ever asks me, like, do I recommend starting an, a YouTube channel? I say absolutely, even with the even with the the types of environments that there you know that there can potentially be, or that sometimes it's not necessarily going to be um, you know like a hundred percent happy go lucky you know sunshine and rainbows type of thing. I feel that there is more good than bad. At least that's the way that I see it. I feel that there's more good than bad. And the fact that you're able to, uh, first and foremost, connect with people, connect with like-minded individuals, and the fact that you're able to share something that you're passionate about, be it luxury goods or whatever the case may be, um, it's, it's so incredibly fun and it's so incredibly satisfying to find uh, those same like-minded individuals that understand where you're coming from. So if you have family members, if you have friends that don't really uh, get why you like this or why you like that, when you find that group of people, it's awesome, you know what I mean? They, you're on the same wavelength and um, it's, it's incredibly satisfying. So uh, while there are things that uh, aren't necessarily the best when it comes to YouTube, uh, ultimately there's a, lot, there's a lot more good than bad and it's definitely an experience that um, I would recommend to anybody because it is very, very fun. So fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Laura G. What are your thoughts on the new Prada Margit? Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Would you get this bag? Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this new Prada right now. This beauty is available in two different sizes, and I believe that the smallest size retails for $2,700 here in the States, if I'm not mistaken. It's available in a variety of different colors. It is a hobo style bag, and it also has uh, quite a few compartments. Now, when I first saw this bag, I was, I was automatically intrigued. I was automatically intrigued because I absolutely love the simplicity that it has. I don't know, um, I mean, I haven't gotten into the store to see how it ends up working out on my body frame or anything like that, so I'd be curious to see how the normal North South, uh, South design ends up working out, like um, if it's hard to see your items, but I love the fact that it has compartments. So it's very organized, but it's still simple. It doesn't have a bunch of bells and whistles. The leather looks absolutely incredible. And um, what I really appreciate about this the most is the fact that it, because of the same simplicity, it's a lot different. It's a lot more toned down than um, than a lot of the a lot of Prada's recent handbag collections. Because I feel like within the last year, maybe year and a half, a lot of their designs have been really, really busy. They have a lot of studs. Um, I know it's all a matter of personal preference, but still, when they introduced this bag, I felt like it was a breath of fresh air, and I felt like it was kind of like old school Prada. So I really um, anticipate that this bag will do incredibly well. I think it has an awesome price point for the fact of it being 
like I said, an all leather handbag, the fact that it has compartments, the fact that uh, from what I have read, a lot of people say that it is quite comfortable. So I'm really interested to see how it ends up working out, you know, as time goes on. But I'm I'm really digging this. I'm really, really digging this. And uh, like I said, I appreciate so many different aspects about it. But I would love to hear what you guys think about this bag. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Um, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. My apologies for sounding so nasally. Um, hopefully it wasn't, uh, hopefully it wasn't too bad. Um, but for this week's lineup, I had a few people suggest, um, for me to do my Chanel handbag collection. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comment section down below because I haven't decided um, what uh, what the other video should be for either Friday or Saturday. So again, let me know in the comment section down below. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.